Hello and welcome to CS230. This is lesson two from lecture two. And in this lesson, we're going to go into some detail on the HTML table element. I mean, we could think about this as advanced structuring or advanced table organization. I mean, tables themselves are complex. And um, so it's not surprising that the element has a lot of um, attributes and sub-elements that allow us to be able to do all of those things um, we want to do with tables for presenting information. So I have a bunch of online notes that I took while prepping and, and, and understanding tables again and revising for this class. Um, and I used uh, HTML doc actually. Uh, for this one, I also use HT, uh, HTML information from the W3 schools. And um, the notes that I'm presenting here, I'm actually going to present in my Markdown editor, which is called Markdown Plus. And Markdown is a form of um, markup as I mentioned yesterday. So we can see some of the markdown here. It's just a way of generating notes. And um, it's nice, I'd recommend it for yourself. I mean, I have a live HTML view on the right here and, um, and uh, you know, you can see that it's very simple markdown. Um, a hash gives a header and it makes it look like this. It's really nice and, and so forth. The good thing about it um, is that it also interprets HTML. So for simple structures and so forth, we'll be able to see live our notes and how they might work. And it's an alternative to um, to using the online playgrounds that we mentioned in the last examples. But yeah, let's get back to tables. And we'll come back to those in a second. So we're going to be looking at a basic table. And this is a, you know, a, a three column, four row table. You can see that this particular one here is styled already. And that's inheriting the basic style that's presented or used by my Markdown editor, which is um, which is Markdown Plus. And it's a paid, it's a paid software, but there are lots of lots of free editors around, and you can get extensions for um, Visual Studio Code and, and there are online editors as well. So it's nice for taking notes. Um, so um, this is the table, and this is the actual structure of the table that, that generates this. So we have our table tag, unsurprisingly, we have our table row, um, sub-element, um, slash row, like slash tr, and the uh, individual cells are are marked up using the TD element. And in this particular one, we have four rows and we close the table tag. Okay, as I said to you, you know, we can generate this um, using, uh, or, or look at this, this particular table um, using markdown. And you can also generate tables with markdown themselves. So, you know, here's a table in markdown. A lot more simple than all the, the complex structures of TRs and TDs. And the thing about HTML you need to realize is that it is very text heavy. And the whole idea of Markdown is that it allows you to be able to mark up text and do nice interesting structures without being overly prescriptive in terms of the tagging. So that's why we sometimes see a lot of people using Markdown as well. Anyway, you, here's a nice little table that was generated. This is the table and this is the code to generate that table. It's not, not yeah. What's interesting about the more advanced features of tables is that we, we sometimes want to add headers and footers to these tables. So there are, so we can change the internal structure about, of, of the, of the um, HTML um, by using the t-head, the t-foot, and the t-body sub-elements. So um, this allows us to be able to set up the internal structure um, and, you know, and keep control of our table. So the head section often usually needs to come first. You can see it here, um, T head, and it wraps around the row structure for this. So it's a grouping element within the actual um, table element itself. We have a footer, which is T foot, and it actually can come anywhere in the table. It doesn't matter where it appears, but it's the footer and it allows us to have a nice footer element. And also then we have you know, just the various cells. You'll notice this little element down at the end here, which is the pling dash dash, and then the dash dash. And those are a way to have HTML comments, okay? And um, if you want to actually look at this in a little bit more detail, I'd recommend that you go to the HTML dog and um, advanced table notes, and you can click on the link. I'll provide you with this document anyway as well, and um, when I upload it to, to Moodle. But anyway, the table now that we generated looks like this. So we see we have a header, we have a footer, we have a cell, and we notice that even though we put the footer in here above the body section, um, 
it appears at the end here. So, you know, it tells us that the HTML processor for tables and the one that's actually used internally in Markdown Plus knows what to do and how to do this properly. So, um, another thing we might want to be able to look at, um, uh, you can actually have a caption tag. Okay, so we can put a caption tag and, you know, let's do this and edit, edit, the, edit the table code so we can see this happening. Um, so, uh, which one will we use? Um, we'll use this one here, which is, um, so here's our table that we're interested in looking at, the one we have our footer and header. So we put a caption in and we, we can put it in here, okay, um, just after our comment. Caption. So we have a caption. Close the tag, and we can see that instantly it, it is attached in the markup. Okay, so we have our caption, it's up here, it's nice, um, and uh, it becomes part of the table. And it's important that we realize that it works and becomes part of the actual table. Okay, so we can do that, it's nice. And um, sometimes we have tables that have internal sp um, spanning, we have we want to style our columns, so we can actually set up a column group called call group here. And we can tell it and uh, to apply a particular style to um, the particular column. So this particular instruction sets a style on the second column and it tells it to be the alternative class. Now we haven't done classes yet, the style, um, class styles. But we'll do that. We'll do that next week. But in principle, um, we we'll, we'll really see this here because what's happening is the table is inheriting the style. You can see that for Markdown in this particular rendering, the display alternates the color of the rows. It doesn't do any alternation on the on the the columns, and we didn't even tell it to do this. It's just doing this anyway. So one way to really check and make sure this thing, particular thing works um, is to either set up an alternative style that you can include, and we'll do that next week, or you can just add a style to a column. So you can see here, here's a style, here's a column. So this, uh, we, we could say, for example, the background to this column would be light blue, and we could actually place it in here to see what happens. Now, nothing's going to happen, I can tell you. It won't happen here, but let's try it anyway. So let's, um, Let's just copy this particular one here. Now let's just copy the, the style part. And let's just put it in here. And look to see what happens. Nothing happens here. Okay, nothing happens here. Okay, so that's not surprising because Markdown is not allowing us to have the control. So let's just undo this, go back. So what we'll do is we'll switch to um, we switch to code pen and you can see here I have I've done it already okay so we have we have our code here the column group and I've put in the style here and told it that the style of the second column should be a light blue and you can see that the rendering of that column is blue so it's a nice way to do this okay it's a very very useful to be able to manage the presentation but we'll do more about presentation next time but it it's you know, it's a structuring and telling you about the columns internally in the, in, in the table here. So that's useful to have this. Let's get back to our Markdown Editor. And another feature that we might want to look at is column spanning and row spanning. So this is an interesting table. You can see here that the rows here, rows or cell in row two, cell two, combines with row two, cell three, for a single cell spanning across the two columns. So that's row spanning. And in this section here, we have column spanning. Okay, so you can use HTML code to do this as well. And, um, you know, we have a very simple table here. Uh, nothing surprising here. We have some heading, it's just a row. And even though we haven't explicitly told it it's a head or header, it's just another column. We have the TH here. Um, but we have used an attribute of a particular cell to span the two cells. Okay, so it spans um, and you tell it the number of uh, columns you want to span, two here, and you basically end up getting and spanning these two here, which is nice. Um, again, you can span rows as we have here. You just tell it the number of rows 
and it's an attribute. So you can structure inter you can structure the internal structure of your document using uh, uh, sorry using all sorts of fancy things, and we see that in the next one. But you can also structure the internal uh, of, a, of a table using something like call group to tell it how they should behave a little bit. And um, you can have your uh, T head, T body, T footer. You can add captions, and you can do spanning. The spanning are attributes of tags rather than tags in themselves. And that's something to note. And um, again, once as before, you can take this, copy it, go to your code pen or your favorite editor, you know, put it in here, paste, and see you have the similar similar settings here. But because there's no styling, it's very difficult for us to be able to see sometimes how, how it works. Um, and that's why it's nice for the structural tag things we want to work. I tend to use a markdown editor. Okay? Um, look, there's lots of advanced examples. You can just use the, the link above um, um, in order to be able to get some practice developing all your understanding how to structure the content. In reality, you're going to end up using some kind of table generator to make tables, and I'll show you those next time. But at times, you will need to hand code or you need to generate them using a program. So understanding the structure, the tags, the options that are available would be really, really beneficial. I use HTML Dog for mine. It was useful for me. I use Markdown to have my notes. Um, um, HTML Dog has lots of nice advanced topics and short digestible um, pieces, but you might have your own preferred site. But a good idea, if you go to a site, make notes, save them for later, encode them in Markdown. It's not too difficult to do. You can see the encoding on the left is a lot, lot simpler than HTML. You can copy and paste and add very simple markup. And on the right, you can get really, really nice notes. I know students who do this all the time for, for, um, for, for their lecture notes as well. Okay, we leave it there. Thank you very much.